Tech Time Traveler here and some sad news today. A legend, a guru in electronics engineering has uh, passed away. Don Lancaster, uh, 83 years old, uh, passed away earlier this month. Yeah, it's been that kind of year. I was my dad, my dog, and uh, one of my electronics gods. So yeah, not a, not a great year so far and we still have half a year left. Anyway, uh, just in honor of his uh, life and his work, I decided to bring out uh, pretty much everything Don Lancaster related that I have. Uh, obviously, I've got uh, a TV typewriter prototype replica here, which I built with his help. I uh, also have uh, the recently acquired Grant Runyon TV typewriter. Uh, and then uh, some magazine articles that he did and uh, one of his famous cookbooks. And uh, also a TV typewriter six and five eights, which was, uh, I believe the last TV typewriter project that he did. I never had the opportunity to actually meet Don. I only ever uh, corresponded with him by email, but I have to say he was one of the nicest and most responsive famous authors I've ever dealt with. I first learned about him obviously uh, due to the TV typewriter I was doing a lot of uh, research on vintage computers as I got into the hobby more and uh, discovered the TV typewriter, which graced the September 1973 edition of Radio Electronics right on the cover. And as soon as I saw this wonderful uh, wood-sided beast, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta have one of those. And uh, yeah, I read up all about uh, the machine and Don Lancaster and his contributions to um, electronics history. As far as a bio goes, I believe he graduated from uh, Lafayette College in 1961 uh, with a Bachelor of Science in uh, Engineering and then later obtained a Master's in Electrical Engineering uh, from Arizona State University in 1967. Uh, he started writing, I think, so maybe late 60s. And, uh, you know, his typical uh, output was in magazines like these, Radio Electronics, uh, Popular Electronics, uh, Kilobod Magazine, 73 Magazine, uh, just, just a whole bunch of places. I, I have no idea how many articles this man wrote, but he wrote a lot. And the thing that he was renowned for was he was such an amazing teacher. Uh, he had the ability to distill really complex subjects down into something that even the most average person could understand. And that was the thing that was really remarkable about the TV typewriter in particular. You know, it is a fairly complicated project, but he basically set it up in a way that you almost couldn't fail <laughs> as long as you followed the directions. Uh, he set it up so that you didn't need an oscilloscope. You know, if you, you didn't even really need a logic probe. All you needed was uh, to follow the instructions, use the test points provided, uh, you know, do everything in order and you would be okay. And I mean, look at this. I have a, well, I think it's still working. <laughs> I don't know for sure because it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it might have decided to die somewhere in between the last time I fired it up and now. But as far as I know for now, it is working. And for someone like me who had zero electronics experience whatsoever, to build something like that and actually get it working was amazing and that was due in no small part to Don Lancaster because um, yeah, he was willing to talk to me about it. I would send him emails asking questions and I initially kind of was hesitant about that because I thought, you know, it's kind of like, uh, like a really famous musician and there's this song that everybody loves but you know, he's really tired of it and he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. I kind of wondered if Don was going to be like that with the TV typewriter. But yeah, he was right in there, man. Anytime I had a question, I sent it. He's like, okay, try this, try that. You know, tried to explain to me sort of uh, how it was supposed to work. We even caught a, an old error that was never caught uh, in the original article here. And yeah, basically got me past a point where I was stuck for a couple of weeks. And the stuff I was most interested in were things like this article uh, in February 1973, where he uh, created a keyboard that you built entirely on your own. So this is like a from scratch keyboard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you had like 
uh, wood doweling and uh, you took coiled wire and turned it into springs. Uh, the key tops were the only thing that were manufactured on it really. The rest was entirely up to the hobbyist. And this, uh, I mean, this was a serious project. I so want to do this on the channel for one of my uh, Raising the Digital Dead episodes, but I just haven't gotten around to gathering all the parts yet. And uh, actually that is the same keyboard that appears here. Uh, another thing of his that I have is his original design for Southwest Technical Products, what became known as the KBD-1. This guy here, I've showed you this in uh, the last video on this TV typewriter, that's the same keyboard. A really historic piece, you know, 45 bucks I think is what it sold for at a time when a keyboard like this from a major manufacturer sold for, you know, hundreds of dollars and that was if they would even let you buy it, which usually they wouldn't. You know, that, that was his, kind of his mantra was, you know, uh, keep it cheap. And that was the idea behind the TV typewriter. Yes, you could buy a computer terminal if you wanted to and put it in your house, but it would cost two to three thousand bucks, which was thousands and thousands of dollars in today's money. Uh, Don looked at uh, the problem a slightly different way and said, well, you know, not everybody has uh, or is going to want to have a computer in their house or be willing to pay out for one, but they all have a television set. So if we make a device that can talk to the television set, then you're part of the way towards having a terminal. And indeed the TV typewriter turned out to be a massive hit. It, it came out just at the right time when kind of everybody was thinking about this, you know, microprocessors were starting to get out there. People were thinking, okay, how do we, you know, create a computer for the home? And the starting point for that was building a terminal. So here comes Don Lancaster with this device that could be expanded into a terminal. It wasn't designed to be a terminal right off the bat, but you could potentially add that capability to it. And that's what pretty much, I think everybody that built one of those did. And that kind of cemented Don's place in history. And I actually put uh, in the title of my documentary video on that machine, uh, it was the typewriter that changed the world, and it really kind of did in a way. I don't think it's really all hyperbole. There's there's some truth to that. Who knows how many people, you know, owe their careers in electronics, in computers, IT, to interactions with a Don Lancaster article when they were younger. Um, there's, there's probably hundreds, if not thousands, of people who were inspired by what he wrote to get involved in uh, electronics, engineering, uh, computers, you name it. Yeah, so this is basically uh, what I've got of, of his legacy. Um, I, there's so many other projects that he did over the years. Uh, he, he loved to do things uh, on the cheap, and he loved using that word cheap. Cheap video, cheap this, cheap that. <laughs> he even had a book uh, called uh, Cheap Video and another one I think called Son of Cheap Video. Uh, and then he wrote books like the TV Typewriter Cookbook, which is just chock full of things that you can do to build a TV typewriter of your own or improve one, uh, you know, things like 64 characters or, uh, you know, using static RAM or different keyboards, modems, uh, you know, stuff you could build to, you know, use it in the field. Like, it's just, the man wrote so much stuff. <laughs> I could spend a lifetime reading it and I probably would because his his writing is so interesting you know like he it's just one of those things that naturally draws you in to to read you know uh, for example uh, here's an article in Kilobod. here is the great happening in tvt technology that you have long been waiting for take a small single-sided pc card with six integrated circuits on it plug it into your kim one computer or other microcomputer and display up to several thousand upper and lowercase characters of your choice all on an ordinary tv set with minimum modifications. Despite its all the bells and whistles performance, the cost of this new TVT approach is so ludicrously low that there's no comparing it with anything previously available. If you're a real dyed in the wool scrounger, etch your own boards, steel sockets and connectors, burn your own proms, etc., you can put this together for around $9 plus the rapidly dropping cost of a character generator IC. You know, like he, he wrote things with such enthusiasm that you, you just couldn't help get excited about getting into it. Uh, I think that project actually is just a slight variation of this one, which is the TVT 6 and 5 8. And uh, yeah, he often arranged uh, for kits to be made somewhere, either with Southwest Technical Products or somewhere else. I think, uh, I don't know if you pronounce it Paya or if it's just P-A-I-A. -A. 
But yeah, there's um, just so many things. He also had an amazing website, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce it yet. I think it's tinaja.com, T-I-N-A-J-A. He's just got like piles and piles of stuff. I've spent hours going through all of his articles. Um, and it's not just to do with electronics. There's all kinds of other things like uh, ancient irrigation canals that he was exploring in Arizona. The man just had a mind that was always uh, acquisitive and, and innovative and looking for uh, interesting new things uh, that he could uh, understand and then teach to others. And, you know, that's something that I've noticed uh, just offhand with people that live to uh, a great age is they never kind of put their minds into retirement. They're always learning. They continue to be inquisitive about their world. And indeed, you know, that's what Don Lancaster was the embodiment of, that the man never stopped learning, never stopped teaching, never stopped researching. He was always interested and engaged with the world and interested in, in learning new things. And I think that's a pretty good lesson for the rest of us as we age. Anyway, um, that's kind of all I wanted to say on the subject. Uh, I wish I had been able to meet him, but obviously he lived a long way from where I live uh, in BC. So yeah, I'm gonna have to settle for just kind of having a smattering of what he produced. Um, if you haven't checked out that website, I would encourage you to do so. Hopefully it'll be kept running, uh, you know, indefinitely. And yeah, if you're looking to start out on electronics, if you're looking for projects you can actually do and put together successfully, I highly recommend starting with the Don Lancaster project because again, the way that he's able to explain complex concepts in simple language that anybody can digest is it's a real gift. It, it really sets him apart uh, from even lots of other uh, electronics authors. Anyway, that's uh, all I wanted to say on that subject. Um, you know, it's, it's another reminder that, uh, you know, life is finite and uh, you need to make the most of it like Don did uh, because before you know it, it's, it's, it's over. Yeah, it's, a, it's been a hard lesson that I've learned uh, a few times this year and I'm hoping I learn uh, for the future. Yeah, what an amazing man he was. And uh, my condolences to his family and everybody else that uh, knew and loved him. Uh, he's definitely going to be missed. Uh, that's it for now, and we will see you soon.